春水呀，天天水水啊！嗨，妈妈。Hi everyone, Sabrina here. I am doing this vlog in a little bit of a different area because my one and a half year old is quite grumpy right now, and the lighting is. Terrible in my house, so for that I apologize. We are having a very cloudy week, it seems. There's been a lot of rain the last, um, well, be two days now, and so we haven't been able to do our um, star stuff that we've been wanting to do through the summer. And I was going to do that this weekend, not realizing that it was going to be so rainy. <laughs> Sorry, I'm rambling. Anyway. <laughs> This is supposed to be a pregnancy update. I am now 32 weeks pregnant. I got two months left. And I still can't believe it that I am that close already. I am getting into that, I'm feeling that last trimester is now, it's coming forward as I am in the last trimester because now I'm remembering all these things that I'm getting that I have had with my other babies. So, one of my biggest complaints, and I shouldn't say like complaining, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to make it sound bad, but for me, it's really, really hard because I want to do things. I still, I still feel um, healthy and, and like I have this drive to get stuff done, but oh, my back today especially has been really hard. Like actually sitting right now is actually really hard. The best thing for me to be doing is lying down when my lower back is hurting like this. Cause when you sit, that's actually not very good for your spine. And I think that's one of the reasons why I've been doing better this pregnancy is I've been keeping up 13,000 or more steps per day. And I think that that has been helping because I'm not getting as much back pain. I haven't had the issue yet where I get up from bed and I can hardly move. I had with my last pregnancy, I remember it was very, very hard for me to get out of bed and I know that that was for at least a month and a half to two months. So I might be coming into that yet, but I haven't reached it at this point. Uh, but today my back pain, my lower back has been really bad. I got up, I tried walking it off and walking was not working, which is odd because usually when my back hurts, walking around a bit, that motion helps. So I tried doing the cat cow position pose um, exercise. I don't know what you call it. I tried doing that one for a while and that wasn't helping. I tried sitting on my ball and doing hip rotations and pelvic tilts and stuff and that wasn't helping. So I grabbed my hot pack and I lay down on my left side because it's actually my lower right side that's hurting. And I think it's because it's how she's positioned. When I last saw my doctor, he had said that her spine was on my um, right and kind of tilted to the back a little bit. So she is facing the wrong way again. Her head is down. So I'm, I'm not concerned because my, <laughs> my last baby, he was completely, he was completely posterior. His, his, his back was to my back and I didn't have any back labor or anything, but that probably contributed to my back pain that I was having because the skull, the head was along where my lower back would have been. That's where she is right now too. So I'm thinking that's why I'm having the pain on my lower right side. So I had a hot pack on there for a while and just tried doing some more hip rotations and just relaxing for a bit. So I am in an empty house and it's driving me crazy because I'm in an empty house. I can do things because I don't have people asking me to help them with everything but my back hurts and so I can't do things. It's really frustrating, no idea how frustrating it is. I really like, I mean I've already pulled the fridge out and cleaned underneath it last week. Um, I said, like I said, I'm, I'm nesting. And yesterday, I was so proud of myself. I, my husband finally went and bought some of this lubricant for hinges, specifically for hinges. It's not WD-40, it's called something else. I can't remember what it is. But I took that stuff to all of the hinges of all of our main doors of our house. 
and now there's no squeak. I'm so happy. So my kids' bedroom doors, when I go and check on them at night, I'm not gonna have to be like, with the door because they were so squeaky. It was terrible. I was always afraid I was gonna wake them up and actually on occasion I did. But yeah, so now I don't have squeaky doors anymore. It is so nice. Um, I've been meaning to do that for over a year. I've actually been getting nauseous again. I did not have much nausea at all in my first trimester. I had a little bit, but it wasn't bad. And then it went away completely. I've had no nausea, like I could eat anything. But lately I've been finding that the nausea has been coming back, especially in the evening before bed. I think it might be because I'm overtired. The last three or four nights I have not been sleeping well. It, it, it's not been helping. My stomach is just, it's not topsy-turvy, but it's, it's just feeling a little like yuck, just yucky. And there's my son. <laughs> I think he's picking up on things that are gonna change soon because he's been acting out so very much. It is driving me crazy. So he squeals at everything. He squeals when he's happy, he squeals when he's angry, he squeals when he's upset, he squeals when somebody isn't paying attention to him, he squeals when somebody's paying too much attention to him. It doesn't matter, he's gonna squeal. So. And I am actually giving him an afternoon nap. He doesn't always get an afternoon nap. He's uh, 20 months right now. And I had noticed that his afternoon nap, he wasn't sleeping. He was just playing around and getting frustrated. So I wasn't putting him down. But today he needed it because he didn't nap as well for his morning nap as he usually does. And he decided to throw a complete and utter tantrum at me today. And I was like, oh, okay, you're tired. Into bed you go. <laughs> We've got a bunch of stress going on, but that has not been helping with my pregnancy. I have been super emotional lately. I'm really just crying over just about everything. It is ridiculous. I am tired of it. I am frustrated with just the situation. I mean, I haven't been sleeping, so that doesn't help. I have done so little of my list. I had this whopper of a to-do list that I made now that would be seven weeks ago. Oh my goodness. I think I maybe have eight things done on that list. And there was 30 items on there, and I should be half done if I wanted to kind of sort of get things slowly. <laughs> yeah, my office is not getting anywhere. I go and I literally step into my office, I look at it and go, nope, and I turn around and I leave. I'm just... And it doesn't help that the farm stress that we have right now has so much up in the air at this point. Basically, we are not sure come September if we're going to be able to keep farming. The thing is, if we have to quit farming and if we have to sell, once again, this is something that we've had with every single baby. I'm pregnant, I'm giving birth to a baby, and then some kind of huge life something or other happens every single time. The last time it was kind of a positive thing. We had gotten the robot installed right after my son was born or right around when my son was born. But it was extre extremely stressful because then my husband was in and out of the barn for um, over a month at night as well. Every few hours going in and out and in and out and there was very little to no sleep for him and so anything involving the kids, anything involving nighttime dealings, everything was all on me and I had a massive case of postpartum depression that thankfully only lasted a couple of days but it was really, 
really bad. And thanks be to God that I didn't act on anything. Nothing towards my kids. There was nothing. I just hated myself in those few days. Um, yeah, and that's very difficult because I was getting the attacks in the middle of the night when I had nowhere to turn. So the only one I could turn to in that moment was God. And thank you, God, he was able to help me through everything. So we have another stressful situation coming up right around when this baby is due. That if we find we cannot farm, if we have to sell everything, we will not be living here anymore. We would, we would have to find a new place to live because, like I talked to my husband about this, we had a really long chat about it a couple nights ago. We would have to find another place. So I don't know what is going to happen right now. We are relying upon God because we both feel like we're supposed to keep farming. And I don't know if that's just we're comfortable here and that's why. Or if that's what God actually wants us to be doing is he wants us to keep farming. So I'm sitting here going, okay, God, you need to move because we don't know we, we don't know what next action step to take. We have a thing we have to have done by the end of September, and there are certain dates that need to things need to be done by certain dates, and if they're not, it won't be completed by the end of September. And I don't know. We're 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 feeling extremely stuck right now. And it is very, very hard because we don't want to lose the farm. This is the third generation farm and it's actually very tricky quite often for a farm to last through three generations. Usually by the time it gets to the third generation, the farms are generally sold off to somebody else and they don't because they don't make it through. Anyways. Thank you so much for watching my video. I know it's like kind of all over the place and I don't know how much I'm going to be editing out and changing and whatever. Um, but yeah, <laughs> thank you for watching and I hope you all have a very blessed week. Um, I actually was going to mention before and I, I didn't. Is anybody interested in um, like a story time type thing? I have been very much contemplating telling my story on why we are choosing to have a large family. And I was also thinking about sharing my birth stories. I don't know if any of you watching are interested in that sort of thing. I know I really enjoy listening to birth stories, especially positive ones. Negative ones tend to scare me off a little bit, but I've had a lot of very positive birth stories. I mean, I've had some negative aspects of my birth stories, but who doesn't have pluses and minuses to every side of everything, right? And um, so I've been thinking about doing like a story time thing where I tell a little bit about um, why we're having the size of family that we're having and why we felt led to do so and my struggles with it because I will be honest I have struggled with the fact that I am going to be a mother of six <laughs> at this point it's it's huge um, I was always just expecting to have two or four babies and uh, here we are <laughs> So I don't know if anybody's interested in that kind of thing. If you are, please leave a comment, let me know. Um, I might just try and make a video anyways. There's a lot of emotion in that and I'm not sure how well I will handle it because I am pregnant. I actually tried making a video about this when I was pregnant with my son 
and I cried so much that I just, I could not post anything. It was so bad. And I don't know how long it would take either. And my camera is probably gonna shut off soon because I've probably filled up the memory card again. I need to empty it. Anyways, thank you for watching. <laughs> and I hope to see you all in my next video.